Hi everyone, this is Neil with Rocker World. I'm still here. Are you guys still there? Anyway, I have three things to cover. Hopefully I'll get them all put together properly and get them across to you. Um, I think I'm going to call this Urgent Message which I borrowed from uh, Lisa from The Lord is My Shepherd. She's one of the few people I've pointed people towards. She uh, passes along messages from all kinds of people, but in particular, I encourage people to follow what comes through Julie Wedby. And then uh, as a second encouragement to follow what comes through God Sealer 7, uh, um, Barbara and Dan, as they report, were given the gift of prophecy. And I think this is my assessment, their hearts are pure, so then their messages are fairly pure. <laughs> Us humans do make mistakes by being a, one of those humans. Anyway, Let's backtrack a little bit. I had encouraged people to be aware of when 1260 days was over. And that was Lamb Selection Day this earlier this spring, just prior to the Passover. And remember, we were talking about God's festivals. Easter is the name of a demon. God did not call this grouping of festivals Easter. He doesn't do that. He doesn't use demons. He tells us to, to uh, do everything in our power to remove demons from our life, from our lives. And he is going to be forcefully removing all of the fallen angels and all of their offspring who are the demons. They are all going to be put in an eternal prison at the end of a thousand of the thousand years. And they will be put in a temporary prison for the majority of those thousand years, leading up to this uh, eternal imprisonment. So then they're going to be let loose for just a short season. And I have proposed that that would be a 50-year Jubilee cycle. That's how God operates his whole system on Jubilee cycles which is part of what I'm going to explain here. Okay, so we had the 1260 days, and then I encourage people to keep track of the counting of seven sevens, seven weeks, between the Feast of First Fruits, which occurs on the first Sabbath after the Passover, that is weekly Sabbath. And you can follow all these things in the three testimonies of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So Yeshua, Jesus, Yeshua, I'm going to try and make a point to this. His name is not Jesus, but we, the believing world came to know him as Jesus after Constantine and cohorts renamed him. Okay. His, his name in the Hebrew and the Aramaic was Yeshua or, a, you know, a variant um, pronunciation of a Hebrew word meaning salvation. That's one of the names of our Savior is, and I'll, I'll, I'll always call him Yeshua first. That's my best guess, but we will find out all these exact things. But his name is not Jesus, and it never was. That was a lie that came from Satan and uh, was presented to us using the pagan sun worshiper, Constantine. Anyway, so we got these numbers, we got these counts. The count of seven sevens was over last Friday, the 28th of May. And even though I'm not going to report something significant happened in my life, other than I made sure my wife and I were keeping these days that was set apart as a Sabbath type day. We didn't work. 
we celebrated the Feast of First Fruits. We hope for something wonderful to happen and and uh, nothing of great significance ha happened, but that doesn't mean nothing happened. What goes on in the spirit world is not necessarily presented to us immediately. And if you have kept track of Julie's messages, her most recent one, which was very recent, uh, she did make a statement along those lines that uh, the, the people that God is choosing has chosen, I'm going to say, for members of the bride will be coming into awareness of who they are that they should be. I think that's how she worded it. They should be coming into a awareness of who they are and what their specific jobs are. If uh, I want to take a look at how my journey has unfolded, I had many uh, aware moments or moments of awareness awakening, if, if that's a good way to put it. Uh, right from the time I was arrested by the Lord, 46 years ago, I had a very distinct meeting with my Lord. He arrested me. <laughs> and then uh, 26 years later, he made it very clear I was to start going to this new little church, little Pentecostal church in Weyburn, near our, our hometown here in Saskatchewan, Canada. And I was delivered miraculously from the depression that I was suffering through for years and years and years. This depression, it uh, got worse and better and worse and better, but never ever went away until the, I had this three-week complete release from this darkness after this pastor of this little church we were sent to by the Lord. He made it very clear we're supposed to go to this little group of people, and uh, after the pastor prayed, laid his hands on me, that thing left me for three full weeks. So that I would describe as another distinct meeting with the Lord. And then it wasn't very long after that, I, uh, my wife and I were being introduced to the, the knowledge we were missing about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and there were gifts being awakened in us. They were there, but they needed awakening. And that this little church that I'm going to say was its job. And then not only that little church, we started going to all kinds of what would be called charismatic type um, conventions, meetings of all descriptions. And uh, in those years, this would be the late 1990s and early 2000, the gift of prophecy was being awakened. And we would go to meetings and uh, they would have this all set up. They would record. Um, people, people would be called up by the guest speaker, let's say, uh, and uh, extensive prophecy would be given to you. And they would record the whole thing and hand you the tape. And, of course, that would help uh, legitimize the whole thing. That is, they were uh, indicating to you that they had confidence that this was accurate. They, and here's the written record, or the <laughs> audio record. So then my wife and I went ahead and copied these extensive prophecies into our lives down in a book. And I, I have uh, read through that, oh, countless times. Countless times over the, well, now 20, let's say 22, 23 years since the first prophecy was given to us. And I'm going to say, um, I'd say about 90% of what was prophesied has come true. And I have, so then I, I don't doubt that all of it will come to pass as time unfolds in front of us. So anyway. Um, early in this that process, I became aware that I was supposed to go to Winnipeg for a specific meeting called a gathering that Dave Damien had put together. And then 
whether it was just a few months later or within the year, uh, David was invited to speak in Regina at a little church called the Lighthouse Church. And we were there, and Nita Johnson was there, which was interesting because Nita was given visions her whole life of what was going to happen to the United States in the Great Tribulation, and it was not good. And I asked the Lord right after that meeting. I was cold. I was out in the parking lot, warming the car up, waiting for my wife. We would go home. It was probably about midnight. And I asked the Lord, if this is true, what David's saying, that Canada has a very important role in the Great Tribulation, then shouldn't it be in the Bible? And he answered me four hours later. I was studying the book of Zechariah, and he showed me in Zechariah 6, 1 to 8. It's talking about the judgment of two nations, the United States and Canada. And it was uh, the whole set of verses there, Zechariah 6, 1 to 8, unfolds from the perspective of the 49th parallel. Anyway, the Lord filled in all these pieces. So that there again was a, uh, a time I was be, being made aware of my purpose. Okay. So, uh, now, <laughs> speed this up. Just a few days ago, we had a funeral that was uh, a person that was in kind of... Uh, the middle of a whole bunch of people the Lord has introduced us to, say a little bit more recently, to walk with and among. And she had passed away and it was her funeral. And we, I wasn't sure we should, wanted, should go or wanted to go or whatever. And anyway, in the middle of the night, the, the, the day, be, two days before I, felt I had this message that, yes, we're supposed to go. But the whole thing unfolded, and I really didn't see clearly why until, I don't know, yesterday, last night. So I'm going to report on that. That's one of the things I want to cover. And I'm at 12 minutes, so let's back up. I've got three things. Back up to these numbers. Okay, I want to take you to Daniel. Right at the end of Daniel, uh, Daniel was given these three sets of numbers. It was 1260, 1290, and 1335. And I see a lot of other people uh, have tackled this uh, set of numbers and counted from the somewhat famous event of, of September 23rd, 2017 which I have said was the sign that the final jubilee of time was about to begin. Now, uh, not everybody's aware of this, but we should be. I mean, as time progresses, we need to learn things. The Day of Atonement is when the year ends and begins, both ends and begins on the Day of Atonement. Uh, on that year, September 23rd, was the Feast of Trumpets. And the Feast of Trumpets is, always, is all about the return of Christ, of Yeshua. <laughs> Let's quit using these Greek terms. Anyway, I, I do do that because I want believers to, to make... I want to create a bridge for them to cross. What we've been taught, by and large, is wrong. There's lots of errors in what we've been taught, Christianity and Judaism. And I want to build a bridge to cross over, that's what Hebrew means, into truth. So, as I was saying, Yeshua's name is not Jesus, never was, but God didn't reveal that until more recently, say, within 20, 30 years ago, started to become 
uh, believers started to become aware that that was more likely his name. And, uh, okay, so let's go back to Daniel here. So right at the end of Daniel, Daniel goes through these three numbers, 1260, 1290, and 1335. And he makes this statement. Um, he says, And blessed are those who wait and remain until the end of 1335, 1,335 days. And then the last verse is a message to Daniel. And he says, Daniel, uh, I'm just going to, maybe I got it here. Yes. As for you, go your way. That is Daniel. You go your way until the end. You will rest. And then at the end of the days, you will rise again to receive the inheritance set aside for you. And I'm going to say that rise again is referring to uh, 1 Thessalonians and 1 Corinthians, those two famous verses about the so-called rapture. We'll call it uh, catching away and the change to spirit being, change into a spirit being. And I have explained what I feel uh, I, in my last episode. That is going to happen at the end of the teaching time of the two witnesses. When the two witnesses, who I'm saying is about a million and a half people made up of the bride and the attendants, they get killed, and then after three and a half days, they rise and meet the Lord in the air. But uh, 1 Thessalonians and 1 Corinthians add more detail. It won't be just these ones who are left alive. <laughs> well, they just, they, they died for three and a half days. But all the saints of the past will, will be brought out of their graves. Now, why the Lord has, does it that way, I don't know. I mean, there's lots of things all of us don't know. But that's how he intends to do it. And you can read about a similar thing in the Valley of the Bones. Where all the people of all the past uh, who have lived and died, will be raised back to life. And that happens at the end of the thousand years, at the final judgment, the great judgment, great white throne judgment. Anyway, let's get back focused on this 1335. And what God said to Daniel there, in other words, Daniel wasn't given an understanding of what this 1335 meant uh, specifically, but he said, you will... Uh, basically, you'll die, and you'll be raised back to life and re receive your inheritance at this time, which I'm proposing is three and a half years from now. So, what's 1335? Well, that's the next pin day we can pinpoint on our calendar. Like I, I encourage everyone to pay attention to 1260. And then we got through the count of seven sevens to the Feast of Weeks, which occurred last Friday on uh, May 28th, beginning at sunset on the 27th. Remember our Babylonian system and our God system are hard to integrate because everything's different in both of them. So uh, trying to help people to follow along, how do we find these days? So. Uh, if you count God's way, and you count from the big, not from uh, September 23rd, because uh, the day, the year, be the the whole tribulation started on the Day of Atonement, which is was October 2nd that year, ten days later. That's using God's system. You count, and you only count 360 days per year. That's how God does things. He has. 12 months per year, and they're 30 days each. And he, he told us in the Book of Enoch how to identify these segments of time. And then there's a, uh, on, <laughs> before the, the orbits of the sun and the moon started being pulled out of whack, likely by the presence of what we've called Planet X Nabiru, it is there. It's 
inbound. And it's what's going to block out the sun for three days and three nights. I think. Anyway, our day, our orbits of our sun and moon are a bit out of whack. There should be only one or two days between each season, but there's not. Uh, in the three past years, I have tracked it uh, specifically, and what has happened is there's one or two days between spring and summer, and summer and fall, and then the break between uh, fall and winter, which happens at the, uh, the fall, the winter solstice is where the break is, the shortest day of the year. There is, no, sorry, back up to the fall. There's three extra days instead of two, one or two, and then there's no days in this last break. So anyway, everything's out of whack. In fact, we're short one day to have a 30-day 30 uh, day month on the last month for the last three years. Anyway, all that put aside, how do you find 1,335 using God's counting system? If you do all the math and do the count, and remember I reported to you that this year began on... Uh, March 20th, and again, you have to make sure that you are starting at sunset. And uh, then the first day of the year is the day after. And if you do all the math and count 30 days, you now we have th three 30-day segments, two, and we're in the third. We're we're in the third one. So 1335 comes out to this coming. Thursday, June 3rd. Again, it would begin on the sec Wednesday at sunset uh, on the 2nd. So anyway, that is, today is Monday, so we're ta talking about four more days. And just to go back to what Daniel said, he said, and blessed are those who wait and remain. Okay, so that's your next heads up, four days from now. Now, hopefully, there's a few of you out there that have been stirred to pay attention that we have been misled, we've been lied to at every level, and that you will take this last tiny bit of time. Our world is changing rapidly for the worse. I think many, many people recognize that we are about out of time and uh, both Julie Wedby and God's Healer 7 are very confident in their prophetic messages that we are out of time and that you'll take this little bit of time to change the course of your life if it's going the wrong direction and at, at any level beginning with have you and I repented of our sins and I had a had a viewer send me a comment here recently and he said where does it say we're supposed to repent and uh, well he said in the King James Version Bible <laughs> as if other versions say something different which, which in fact is true uh, versions vary from each other but as I have encouraged people to do go to the JPS it's the most accurate translation we have of the Torah, Prophets, and Writings, and the uh, Aramaic English New Testament that Roth, Andrew Roth, put together is the only <laughs> translation we have of the Aramaic um, apostolic writings. And that's unfortunate because uh, neither are perfect. <laughs> they both could do better. But it's the best we got. So that's my encouragement. Those two documents and every other translation we have is using the flawed Greek manuscripts. And it's well known they're flawed. So just another indication that it's Satan that's running the show, not uh, when God said that 
Satan is the god of this world, and he's given him 6,000 years to interfere. That is the truth, and our 6,000 years is not up yet. So Satan is highly involved in everything, including the religions of Christianity and Judaism. And he's highly involved in, I'm going to talk a little bit about the vaccine that's being pushed uh, worldwide on everybody. And what's my uh, third topic? Oh, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, funeral that I was sort of, well, I'm going to say I was told to go, and then I was wondering, well, why am I here? And then uh, about a day later, I realized, oh, okay, that's what I was supposed to uh, grasp, why God wanted me to go through this exercise. So let's go to the vaccines for a moment. I hope, uh, and again, if this is stirring up anything in anybody out there, go back and listen to the last four episodes and read the commentaries. That um, I'm bringing across hopefully enough things that you can change the course of your life if it's going the wrong direction. If you've believed the lies of Satan, the lies of Christianity, Judaism, been going down the wrong road, you can make a change in the direction you're going and make a change in the reward you're going to receive for all of eternity. We have just a few days left, whether it's uh, 1335 here on Thursday, which is the Sabbath day. June 3rd is the Sabbath. We'll have one more Sabbath. Oh no. Uh, yeah, the 10th will be the last Sabbath, and then we'll have the new moon on the 11th of June. Anyway, let's talk about the vaccines a little bit. I want everyone to think about why we're dealing with just three vaccines. Why are we given the choice of three vaccines when the, this world that we're living in has enough technology spread through many, many, many nations that we could produce thousands of different kinds of vaccines? There's every developed country in the world could make their own vaccine easily. And I, I'll give you an example. I live in a, a country that's highly advanced technology technology uh, with technology technologically advanced but it's still a small nation with little muscles compared to our big brother in the south the US they, he, they have big muscles we have about 40 billion pe million people 40 million people were tiny and then Saskatchewan is a province and we're very tiny we have 1 million people and, and we've had one million people for most of our existence. We used to use the million people to put the crop in and take the crop off. And now we have a million people and only a few of them put the crop in and take it off. And we have all these other industries. Anyway, the point is we're very tiny. We have at least one lab called the Vito Lab in Saskatoon, the second Actually, it's the largest, I think it's the largest city in Saskatchewan. But, uh, Regina is our capital. It's a little bit smaller. Anyway, they, my daughter works there, and they've produced two vaccines, which could be used. And the, the point I'm making is, why are we being forced by the powers that be to choose from three vaccines that all have their problems? I'm going to propose that there's an agenda. I, in fact, I'm going to say it's very obvious if you just examine the whole thing. We can all make our own vaccines. Most countries can make their own vaccines. So why is there appear to be a camaraderie between all the countries to go along with this scheme to force everyone to take one of three? No. What I want you to do is go to the Lord is my shepherd. Lisa just passed this along. It's called Urgent Message. And it, I think it was posted yesterday or the day before, very recent. 
And what you want to do, it's, it's a, like a minute and a half or something like that. Click on part one. Uh, just scroll down to, um, what do they call it? She pinned uh, um, another report from another ministry. Anyway, I would, uh, I would like you to listen to that. Now, there's three parts. I only listened to the first one. I couldn't get into the other two, but that's all I needed to listen to. And I don't necessarily say it's all 100% accurate or, or not. I want you to listen. One of them, one of the uh, things that this ministry, whoever wrote this, is bringing across is that she explains what it means about the 1290 days when the uh, this sacrilegious object or person sits down in the holy place and says, I am God, or wants to be called God. Anyway, that's a rough description, putting all the scriptures together, but she proposes that it all comes down to our DNA. And these vaccines, the reason they're pushing just three is because they've added something to those vaccines, and they want everyone on earth to take one of those three vaccines that are being offered instead of the thousands that we could produce quite readily in all our high-tech labs all over the world. Just like our, the one we have here in little old Saskatchewan. We produce two. Yeah, and we're only a million people. Why are we being forced to take a vaccine that who knows who made it somewhere in this world? And why did our Canadian government and why did virtually every other government on the face of the earth agree to, to, to push their agenda. So what's the answer to this? Well, there is an agenda. Anyway, please read that urgent message. It's called from, from Lisa on The Lord is My Shepherd. I'll put these things in my commentary. Click on the pinned, site, the pinned program, and it, it, it's, uh, there's both audio and a written. I like always like written ones. That's I guess that's why I really focus on writing a commentary for each one of my videos. I often fill up the entire space that YouTube offers me. So please, again, if this is saying anything at all to you, pass it around to your friends and please go back and watch all f four. Well, it'll be five now. Five videos and their commentaries. Please. Okay. Now said for the vaccines, I have, well, I'll say one last thing. I have said quite a number of times, do not take the vaccine. I've really urged people, don't get involved in this thing. God created in us an immune system, and it works. If we treat our bodies um, nicely, they will work for us. And if we die, we die. And then I've gone ahead and explained to you through uh, episode 211 how it is far more likely we're dealing with electromagnetic poison coming from our 5G system than we're dealing with some horrible COVID-19. That's just the outward appearance of what's really happening. Anyway, okay, now enough. Now I'm going to go to this third topic, this funeral that I end up going to. I'm trying to figure out why am I here, what was the purpose, other than uh, there was, let's say, about 10 people that the Lord has connected my wife and I with over these past three years, let's say. Like our, you know, how everybody's journey the Lord directs it. And in our journey, my wife and I, we've been, um, have fewer and fewer and fewer people as time has progressed. And it, I expect it's the same for anyone who's walking with the Lord. Anyway, uh, 
let's say this funeral, which was broadcast on YouTube, involved a couple hundred people, let's say. And uh, there was about 40 at this, uh, that were physically there. And let's say there was about 10 that I have a distinct sense that I'm connected with, that the Lord is connecting my path with their path. So what, whatever's going to unfold in front of us, there's a specific purpose. The Lord has connected us all. Okay, so we're at this funeral and people get up and it's, a, you know, a memorial, a celebration. And they talk about this, this person who just loved Jesus. And they all expressed in many, many ways how she loved Jesus. She loved Jesus. Now, my wife and I, our last experience with this same lady was she attacked us openly in front of everybody uh, pointing out that our theology was all wrong so this is the point i'm going to make from all this if the jesus you believe in was not circumcised and ate pigs and kept christmas then I'm going to say you're believing in the wrong Jesus. Now, I've brought this out in these, this is be the fifth in a series. We'll call this a series of five. That if you are awakening from the strong delusion that we've been in, see, Satan has created a strong delusion. Beginning with Constantine, he introduced, he is the angel of light, Satan is the angel of light. He introduced us to the one called Jesus. That's not his name. His name is Yeshua or another pronunciation of this Hebrew word that means salvation. That's, that's one of his names. Another name he has is the rock. And you can read about it in 1 Corinthians 10 go from 1 to 4 and you'll see what got, what is related that our rock who is yeshua the one christians have called jesus christ he was the one who led the children of israel through the red sea gave the torah to moses on mount sinai and the book of jubilees and led them through the wilderness for 40 years. That was our rock, and that rock was Yeshua. That's what it says there. Okay, so now we know who our rock is. He was the one who never changes. Remember what it says? Yeshua, the same yesterday, today, and forever. An unchanging God. See, at this funeral, when it was all said and done, I was... We came home and thinking about, okay, why did I go over there, you know? Uh, other than I, you know, I saw a few of these people I've been connected with, and I, I keep feeling this connection with them. I don't know what it's there for. I, and, and again, back to all the warnings I've been giving, time is up. We should be coming into an awareness of our job. And we should be coming into an awareness of who the Lord is connecting us to, who, who we are to walk with, and he will show the reasons as the time unfolds in front of us. Anyway, uh, it became apparent that to me that this person we're talking about believed in the wrong Jesus because the Jesus that she loved wasn't circumcised, ate pigs, and kept Christmas. Now, I'm, I'm picking on just those three things, but there's thousands and thousands of things within the Torah that the Lord, that Yeshua said, do not think I came to get rid of the Torah. And if you break the least commandment in the Torah and teach others to do the same, you will be considered least in the kingdom. And I'm going to say that this person, along with the vast majority of Christianity, 
fall in that category that Yeshua was pointing out that they're not believing in the real Jesus. They're believing in this false um, figure that Paul talked about. No, no, is it Second Corinthians? I'll put that about the angel of light. Just like I said, Google angel of light and read the whole chapter. Paul was talking about a different Jesus, a different apostles. They were false. This is a false message. Anyway, if in these last few days that remain in this world that is um, falling into chaos, darkness, troubles upon troubles upon troubles, where we appear to be facing the great tribulation, and in my words, we're in it. Uh, there's whatever time is left to awaken, it's time to awaken. If any of these things are speaking to you, then um, check into them, encourage others to. We want the real Jesus, whose name is The Rock, and this four letter, I think it's four letters, this Hebrew word that means salvation. He is our salvation. And that false Jesus is not our salvation. So that's a, a strong warning as I can muster. And uh, I'm at 41 minutes, so I better be quiet. And uh, depending how the days ahead of us unfold, I'll talk to you again. Hopefully, one way or another.